this uh, big old pumpkin in my oven's hot. I was just making some bread. I got some nice, beautiful bread. Watch that video if you want to learn how to make bread from scratch using your hands. Um, but I thought I'd do a video on what to do with pumpkin. Uh, it always amazes me that in, in our culture, North America, um, the majority of the pumpkins that are grown are grown for the purpose of turning into a jack-o'-lantern, leaving on your uh, front step and then throwing away. Um, I grow a variety of pumpkin, I'll put the, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here, that uh, actually tastes good. Uh, you can make a jack-o'-lantern out of it, but once you're done doing the Halloween thing, you can actually eat them. Uh, I got a good, you know, dozen, a couple dozen of these this year. They store really, really well. It's a what they call a winter squash. I uh, just put them in a cold room. I just keep, stick them in my garage. Literally, just put them on top of cardboard like this and leave them. And I find they keep till about February, give or take. Sometimes they start to go bad around the ends. Depends on uh, when you harvested them and how gentle you are, with, with that sort of thing. But you just monitor them and, and use them. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd do a video on how to uh, prepare and cook these because uh, I don't see a lot of that going on. Um, most important thing for me is to start with a good knife. Uh, you want a, a knife that's fairly narrow. That is to say the, the width of the back is narrow. Uh, this is a good length, maybe six inches long. Um, a lot of food prep, the difficulties people have with preparing food is just in their tools and their ability to use their tools and the knowledge of the tools. Uh, a good sharp knife is very, very important. Every time I use this knife, uh, I run it on a hone three times. I bought this in like 2005. I've never had it professionally sharpened. All I do is hone it every time I use it and it's as sharp as a razor. Um, so, you take your pumpkin and uh, You'll notice this seems to go through it fairly easily. Almost use it like a like a lever, right? And you sort of stab in and then you know let it go around, crank down like that. Okay. Now I, I like to cut it from top to bottom, right down. You have a sharp knife, this work is very easy. Notice how I'm not fighting with anything, it's just opening, almost like it wants to open up, right? Uh, I'm going to save some of the seeds. This was my biggest pumpkin this year, so I'm going to save the seeds. And all you got to do is put some of these on top of some, uh, you know, just grab a couple handfuls of them, put them on top of some newspaper, and let them dry for a day or two. And then just uh, stick them in a brown paper bag till next year. So the first thing you got to do is... Uh, Scoop all the guts out, so let's let's get that done. Hey there, I don't know how much of that was lost. I had my camera die part way through there, so I had to switch to a different camera. Hopefully this works out okay, but uh, hey, I'm just uh, scraping the guts out of the pumpkins here. And uh, you know, don't be afraid to use your use your body, put it against your body, and I should be wearing an apron here, but I can't stand wearing aprons, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, also, you notice how I'm holding the spoon. I'm holding it down tight like this. I'm not holding it back here where the handle is. I'm holding it down here so I can get my thumb and, and forefinger on it so I got more strength. You know, if you know all these things, don't be insulted. Just explain this to people that uh, don't. Uh, one thing I notice when I'm in a grocery store, based on what I see everyone buying in the grocery store is that uh, people don't know how to prepare food because they buy food that's already been prepared for them and uh, of course they're leaving their health up to uh, uh, private companies that are you know their goal in life isn't your health their goal is making money so uh, you know your goal is your health so uh, forgive me if I'm giving instructions on how to, you know, what tools to use and how to hold them and all that sort of stuff. It's got no, no reflection on you, the viewer in particular, it's just what I notice people buying in the grocery stores implies to me that most people don't know how to prepare food. So I decided in my videos to sort of speak to, to that nuance, right? So uh, here, I got these all cleaned up. That's done. 
I'll save some of these seats later when I got time. So I got these all ready. And now I could I could put these uh, in the oven like this, you know, rub a little oil and salt and pepper on them, that sort of thing. Uh, I could do it that way. But I found that you get a, a more tasty result. This is just my opinion. If you get the if you get the peel off and you roast them without the peel, because that way you're you're increasing. You I mean, what? Why roasted food tastes good is because it's being roasted, and there's that uh, fantastic uh, chemistry that happens when uh, the surface of certain foods that have sugars in them are exposed to heat. They get brown. It makes them taste good. So the more of that uh, surface area you can expose to the heat, the more complex flavors you're going to get. It's better. Gonna, it's going to taste. And the easier job you're going to have of convincing your children <laughs> to eat it. So I like to take the peels off of these. It only takes uh, a few minutes. I'm going to show you how I go about doing that because I think that might be a chore for some people. Uh, so I take one of these halves here and I, I cut it into pieces that I can manage. That are like a nice uh, manageable shape. Alright, so let's just cut this down. I'm going to cut this in, into quarters, like this, quarters. I'm going to get another bowl to put these in, like this. See how this stands, stands on its own. All right, so I'll cut away the, a bit of the end here. Now it's going to stand like this, and now I just hold it. And I work my way down with, with my knife and just pare off uh, the outside. Notice how I'm not starting from the top here, I'm starting from halfway down. So if you start with the top, it gets a bit tippy and you, you might cut your hands. And I've cut myself bad enough, and I cut myself lots of times, and I know it's possible. By doing it this way, I'm sort of holding it here between my finger and my thumb, and no matter where this knife goes, it, it's not going to cut me, right? I'm just cutting in about Oh, an eighth of an inch deep, right? Half a centimeter. I got that part done. Now I can hold it like this and do the remainder. All right, so that piece is prepped. Let's move that off to the side. Now I'm just going to cut this up into, into chunks that are about, oh, I don't know, no, about, about that size. Throw in the bowl. I'll do this for the whole pumpkin. skin on. Uh, it's a lot easier to roast it that way. And you know that's that's true. All you got to do is throw it in the oven. But then you got to get the skin off. And uh, when you when you roast it with the skin on, uh, number one you got to wait a good while for it to cool down so you can do that. And, and number two there's still a good lot of you know a good deal of waste that happens when you're getting it out of the skin. I don't find the, uh, personally and I've been doing this a while I don't find that what I lose this way is uh, uh, greater or less than or whatever. The advantage of doing it this way, and, and as you can see, it doesn't take long to, to you know, peel a pumpkin this way. You can't use a potato peeler for it unless you've got a really special one. You just need a really sharp knife and the work. You can see the ease that I'm, I'm not like, you know, using all my strength here. The speed and the ease uh, with which I'm gliding through this pumpkin, it's because I've got a good knife and I know how to use it. I know how to hold it. To get uh, the most out of uh, you know the uh, the tool, the functionality of the tool. Um, 
the, the advantage of this is I, I've got lots of surface area so it can brown up really good and also at the other end of the cooking process, right, there's no more to do once this has been in the oven for a good hour. Uh, it's basically ready to be mashed up and I mean all the way we, we all we really do to prepare this is I, I roast it in the oven and then I mash it with, uh, you know, I roast in the oven with salt and pepper and that sort of thing and then uh, just mash it up with a little brown sugar, a little bit of butter. I use fake butter because I'm lactose intolerant and that's all it really takes. And there's lots of different recipes and approaches you can, you can do. The whole point of this video here is just to show how easy it is to uh, prep up a pumpkin. And of course the advantages of, of growing a, a variety of pumpkin that uh, tastes like squash. I mean this tastes kind of like, this variety tastes like a butternut squash, I guess, that sort of thing. That's the sort of texture and flavor it has. Anyway, there's one whole squash all uh, put together. So now all I'm going to do with my pan here is oil this a little bit, put the pumpkin in, sprinkle some salt and pepper on, stick it in the oven. So I'm just using a regular uh, a vegetable oil here. You don't, you don't want to use olive oil when you're roasting in an oven unless you've got the temperature fairly low because it's got a low smoke point. This is just a, a canola oil. You can use peanut oil or you know whatever whatever kind of oil uh, uh, works for you. I just I just use the cheap stuff. Um, but yeah, you, you, you don't want to use an oil with a low smoke point. It has to smell like it's been on fire. Uh, you could take all these and toss them in oil and that sort of thing, but find there's much to be gained from that. Alright, so now they're all in this roasting pan. Let's sprinkle some salt and pepper on them and we're ready to go. I got this uh, kosher salt. How much? I would say for this amount, uh, I would use a good, uh, you know, two teaspoons really. Uh, that's kind of, I don't really worry too much about salt. That's about two, two teaspoons there. And now pepper. And lots of it, don't be shy. <laughs> Now, when you're, when you're roasting this amount, it, do, it doesn't hurt to, to get the flavor at its best. To, uh, you know, it takes about an hour for this much, maybe a little bit more, give or take, right? Depending on where you are relative to sea level and so on. I have my oven at 350 Fahrenheit. My oven's in Fahrenheit. Uh, Canada's a Celsius country, but the ovens are in Fahrenheit, go figure. Um, I find that uh, if you take it out halfway through after half an hour and put amounts in a bowl and just re-toss it with a little bit more pepper and you can add a little bit more salt too um, and then put it back in that just helps everything get uh, better exposure to the, the seasoning and also the heat but anyway this is ready I could put a bit more pepper in here I don't tend to uh, go shy on the pepper there we go yeah, it's like three meals worth of squash, right? That's all going in the oven right now. Uh, the great thing about squash is that, uh, you know, not everything tastes good when it's been reheated, but I find squash, if you cook it all in one big batch and you divvy it up into containers and, and freeze the mashed up squash, uh, reheated squash for me tastes just as good as the day you cooked it. It's just one of those, some things keep really well like that. That's one advantage to it stores really well but not only that if you cook a whole bunch it reheats with uh, not a lot not much of a loss of uh, you know value in terms of how good it tastes. So uh, I'll come back in an hour and show you what everything looks like. I'll come back in half an hour when I take it out and sort of retox it. That's a step you don't have to do it's just something I do to make it taste a little bit better. People are come to your house and they don't understand why your food tastes a little bit better, it's because you do the little extra things to make them taste a little bit better. You know, add one more minute to the you know, cooking steps and uh, it just gets a lot more flavor going. Alright, so uh, stay with it. Alright, so it's been in there a good half an hour and uh, all I'm going to do here is just turn it around a little bit, get the other surfaces uh, exposed to the heat. And add a little bit more seasoning. Don't have, again, you don't have to do this. I just find it 
just helps to uh, enhance the flavor. Okay, so just going to add a little bit more pepper. Smells good. And back in the oven. See you in half an hour. Hey, just a quick follow up video. It's the next day. Uh, my family came home and I couldn't finish the video. And if you can hear kids playing in the background, that's my kids. Uh, anyway, so I, I just, uh, after about an hour, I turned the oven off and just left them there all night. It's the next day. They're still fine. All right, so all I would do with these from this point on, there's, there's, you can tell they're, they're soft, right? Smushy. I would just mash this up, add a bit of brown sugar. Uh, I can't eat butter, so I would either use that fake butter or um, I've tried uh, coconut milk. I don't mind it, but it's a stretch getting my kids to, you know, you want to add something fatty to it to just, you don't have to, I just, <laughs> I feel I like to add some kind of fatty thing to it. If I cook a chicken, I'll put the, the fat from the chicken in with it, with brown sugar. That might sound gross to some people. Certainly, if you're vegan or vegetarian, that's repulsive, but uh, uh, I'm not, and it's awesome. <laughs> anyway, so that's how I, uh, uh, you know, prepare a lot of squash. And this is probably, you know, the way my family goes at it, uh, two, two meals worth, maybe three, depending on how hungry people are. Um, so, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.